that claim, that, that sort of assault on Jefferson, seems to have grown apace in recent years, perhaps during this century. Before the last 20 years or so, it, was, it would have been uncommon to have, for instance, feared for the fate of statues of Thomas Jefferson. Um, schools and other institutions were named after him. Um, it, it seems to be a, a, a very recent development that, that Thomas Jefferson should be regarded as a figure to cancel. Um, yes, and I think a lot of it has to do with two um, important events. One was Fawn Brody's book in the 1970s, which was her psychoanalytic biography of Jefferson, in which she speculated about uh, these m uh, matters with uh, Sally Hemings. Uh, and Sally Hemings was the, was the black slave uh, of the uh, Jefferson at Monticello. She was one of the slaves, and she was one of the slaves who went with Jefferson to Paris uh, to look after his young daughter. Uh, so, uh, but what really, I think, uh, uh, intensified the anti-Jefferson barrage in the uh, uh, in the 1990s was the DNA business. Right. That this is this this was the first time that people began to speculate seriously that Jefferson had fathered slaves. It's true that going back to Jefferson's own lifetime, there was a terrible uh, vitriolic newspaperman who had published these rumors that there were mulattoes at uh, Monticello, who looked an awful lot like Thomas Jefferson, but that wasn't serious and everybody regarded it just for the smear campaign that it was. But once you had the DNA uh, business come to light, then people began to think that Jefferson was not only a slaveholder, but someone who engaged in long-term sexual relations with one of his slaves. And that had never been the case up until uh, the DNA business, and I'll explain that in a moment. But up until that time, the speculation which Douglas Adair, who was a major American historian, um, the speculation was that the father of at least some of these children was Jefferson's ward, a young man named Peter Carr. And it's ironic that one of Jefferson's great letters on the moral sense and how you should abide by the moral sense was to Peter Carr. And But the speculation was that the two Carr brothers were probably the um, fathers of Sally Hemings' children. And then when the DNA evidence came out, for the first time, they were ruled out as possible uh, fathers of her children. And, the, and the, all of that goes back to Eston Hemings, who was the youngest of Sally's children. And they had DNA evidence from him that um, uh, indicated that he had a specific chromosome that was distinct to the male Jefferson line. Right. This was not DNA from Thomas Jefferson. It was just male Jefferson DNA. Mm. And all that it indicated was that someone in, of lineal descent, a, a male, uh, was the father. And so rather than begin a search to try to see who among all of the Jefferson possibilities could have fathered uh, Sally Hemings children, people immediately jumped to the conclusion that this was this was Thomas Jefferson himself who was the father. Mm -hmm.